Okay, Esther chapter 6. A great chapter on pride as a sin. On that night, could not the king sleep? Again, the question is, on that night he couldn't sleep. Is it, is it because of Haman and his gallows being built? A little extra side note there. Nothing. But the king could not sleep. God is not mentioned in the book of Esther, but God is behind the scene. And what we're going to see in the first few verses of this chapter, God is there. And there's a lesson to be learned. Could not the king sleep in Samia? And he commanded to bring the book of the records of the Chronicles. And it's not Chronicles of, of the Bible. So don't come up with a joke. Oh, if you read Chronicles, it'll put you to sleep. That's, you're taking it out of context. You know, we do many things for a laugh out of context today. What he's saying, bring me the records of, of this country. Maybe that will put me to sleep. You know, it'd be like a, a, a meeting where, you know, the minutes. That's what, it, that's what I was trying to think of. So bring me the book of the records of the Chronicles. And that they were read before the king. Now, he doesn't read them. He has somebody else read them for him. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Victor and Tarshish to the king's chambermen, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king as a hearse. And the king said, What honor and dignity has been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. <coughs> Dude, that was chapter 4, verse 16. Not chapter 4, where is it? Oh, uh, Esther. Yeah, find it here. At 4.16. Alright, yeah. Esther 2.21. Now, I'm going to show you something. That we find in the Old Testament that is very true today in the New Testament in the church age. 2.21. In those days while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chambermen, Bithma and Perish, there they are, Perish, of those which kept the door were raw and sought to lay hand on King Antiochus. And the thing was made known to Mordecai by God, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. Esther has no idea why she did this. Yeah, I'm going to say there's no God in Esther yet. God's working behind the scenes. I believe God told Esther to say, now when you tell the king, you tell him your uncle did it, Mordecai. And you make sure the records record his name because in chapter 6, his name needs to come up. And the little contrite thing of putting a man's name down somewhere. And God is going to use it later. And I'm trying to show for us Christians, if we don't do the little things, God can't do the big things. And when God lays for us to do something small, don't we have a hymn that says little as much as when God's in it? So you take, in chapter 2, a little name of Mordecai written down about a bunch of men who are going to do harm to the king, and read in chapter 6, besides the, the proudness of, of Haman, look at the much what God's going to do to Mordecai. So, chapter 6 again, verse 4. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outer court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. So here comes it is, it, the, the second uh, banquet hasn't happened. I built the gallows. I'm going to hang Mordecai. He can't wait for the banquet. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman stands in the court. And the king said, let him come in. Okay, he's been invited. So he can come in. 
So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, Now watch the pride. What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth, the first time that word shows up, delighteth, to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, with the, man, with the heart man believes in the righteousness. The heart makes the man. Watch his wicked heart. To whom would the king delight to do honor more than myself? The king's speaking about me. Everybody in the world is thinking about me, Haman. Who would a king love to honor? Me. Watch God tear this guy down. And, ha and Haman said, uh, answered the king, For the man whom the king delighteth to honor, now watch the position of Haman, and tell me who do you think he's talking about, and what he wants. Let the royal apparel be brought, which the king useth to wear. Let king, get your clothes out of the closet. All right. Uh, the horse that the king rides upon. King, your horse. Your clothes, your horse. And the crown royal which is set upon his head. No ordinary crown, but your crown, king. And look how he's talking about the king. In It's not like he's talking to king. He's doing the third person. Do you know somebody written the Bible says, I will sit as God, I will Thanks. sit above your throne. Satan. you got somebody who is not the king, but he looks like the king. Do you realize, and I read today, Solomon, his brother has usurped the authority of the government, got Joab and, and Abiathar and the priests and all that, and David says, no, no, no. Get the mule, Right, have him ride on my mule and anoint him king, then give him the crown and give him the robe. Now, who do you think uh, that Haman's thinking about? He's already told you he's thinking about me, myself. What does Haman want? He wants that position of the authority of the king. Your clothes, your horse, your crown. That's exactly what Absalom did. Absalom's a type of the of Antichrist. You know what happened if God did not step in in verse 9 and 10 and 11? This guy would have gotten on the horse, got the clothes, got the crown, and he probably would have got the kingdom. Like Absalom did. That's why you got to study your Bible. That's why you got scripture with scripture. So let's keep going. And let this apparel... It's almost like he's holding it. This apparel? It's like they went and got it. And horse. I don't know if the horse is there, but let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes. King, you get, your, get the most noble, the most well-known one. See what this guy's heart is? That they may array the man. <laughs> oh, the man. That's the expression. The man. You know what the Bible says? I believe with Pilate. The man Christ Jesus. This man is a type of it. The man, me. Amen. Antichrist. And the Bible calls him a man. The Antichrist. This is wicked. This is tribulation coming all back. Array the man with all whom the king delighted. It has to be me. Remember he said myself. To honor. And bring him on horseback through the street of, this, of the city. And proclaim before him. The man that's on the horse. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Revelation, that's just this verse just came to be. Revelation.
Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. Revelation 6, 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. What color horse do you think the king would ride? And he that sat on him, he that sat on him had a bow. A crown was given unto him. And he went forth to conquer and to conquer. That's the Antichrist coming. That's the Antichrist I just read in Revelation. This guy wants to assert the authority of the king right before as he's talking to the king. I now the king, you know what the king's thinking? Mordecai. The king is in no wise thinking about Haman. I'm thinking about the man that saved my life. Nothing's been done for him. Haman's like, hey, me, myself, and I. So go through the city. Why? Look at look at everybody. Look at me. It's not just my friends and my family and my wife there. It's and my children. Look at me, everybody. Be careful of ones who want the spotlight and want the big awards that go with it. And proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted in honor. Now here comes the big drop. <laughs> the eagle the eagle killer. Then the king said to Haman, make haste. He, he, he imagine this sitting here like, hey, all right. Take the apparel. All right, all right, yes, all right, yes. And the horse, woohoo, everything I've asked for. I got my three witches from the Aladdin's lamp. As thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai. Uh -huh. I, ain't, I ain't there yet. This Mordecai. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's not what I wanted. And then you got Mordecai the Jew. <laughs> I'm telling you. You got to read Revelation 12. But we're, not, we're not going to. But it's that dragon versus that woman and that, that, that male seed of that woman, which is the nation of Israel. And their fierce anger. And the devil has been kicked out of heaven. The war in heaven. He has been thrown to the earth. He knows his days are numbered. And he is out to get that. Here we are. Talk about an ego breaker. And Amy is like, this is supposed to be me. The Jew. And, you know, the Holy Spirit threw that in there. I can guarantee it. Because he's a Jew's enemy. Now watch this. Now watch what the king knows. Not only the king knows he's a Jew. He doesn't know his wife is a Jew. Quite interesting. That sitteth at the king's gate. He knows where Mordecai is every day. Mordecai's got the reputation. Mordecai's got the character. He's there every day. And he's faithful. He's faithful to the king. Protected him. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Oh, oh. Then Haman, then took Haman the apparel, <coughs> excuse me, and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai. He helped Mordecai get dressed. <laughs> and brought him on horseback through the city of the city, and proclaimed before him Mordecai, Haman doing it. Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth in honor. You gotta say one thing about Haman, he's obedient to the king. But oh, I bet you he said that tongue in cheek. I bet you he didn't say it with happiness. And can you imagine his wife said that if you've begun to fall, you're going to fall before Mordecai? Can you imagine if his family and his friends saw what's going on right here? And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, run right back to the gate. But Haman hasted to his house mourning, <laughs> poor baby, and having his head covered. 
Now he's in shame. Now he is, oh, I'm destroyed. I had to carry that. I can think of some words he probably used. Of that Jew. I had, oh, that's my position. That is my place. That's exactly what the devil thinks today. That place that God, that's mine. How dare you Christians worship God? You're supposed to worship me. Remember, he had the nerve to say that Jesus fall down and worship me. That's my position. Would it be a comfort that we make the devil mourn by serving and praising God? So he had his head covered, and Haman told Zerus, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen, or watch the word fall, <laughs> befallen him. Then said, his, then said the wise man, and Zerus, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, there's that Jew again, be whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. Haman needs to stop, but he won't. And then there's an interruption. And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains and hastened to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. And in the next chapter, Lord willing, that's it. He's gone. And then the counter of everything that he has done gets overridden. 